AI, artificial intelligence. It's the rise of the machines, judgment day, humanity deleted as we become nothing more than an organic bootloader for an indifferent hive of nanites that'll crack our world for fuel on their way to dispassionately conquering the stars. Whoops, whoopsie. What I meant is it's the singularity, the great enlightenment, the golden age of humanity sundered from all labor and toil as ambient world computing erases all creative limitations, enabling us to literally go where no one has gone before. No, my bad. It's a tool on an ever escalating scale, neither angel nor demon, but we use it so, able to pre viz a whole entire movie or deep fake propaganda, chat out an email response or cheat up an essay, potentially the biggest board with the biggest nail yet for building or bludgeoning alike. Here are three stories. The very first time I talked to AI engineers deploying machine learning at massive scale, they described it to me like Tinder for computers. You didn't code so much as you trained. It wasn't a program as much as a pet. Literally, swipe right, swipe left. Hot dog, not a hot dog, hot dog, not a hot dog, not a hot dog, damn it. Hot dog, hot dog, hot dog, swipe, swipe, swipe. Like, maybe you're trying to sell your house and you take a bunch of photos just to show it off, but you have no earthly idea which photos to use, which ones will make your house more rather than less appealing. But there's this app that's been trained by thousands of the very best real estate photographers in the world and it crunches all your pics and based on all that training, highlights the best ones for you. Next, it was about generative adversarial networks at equally massive scale, where the human stopped training the model on hot dogs and the machine takes over that training. Then you have like a Batman model, world's greatest hot dog detective on one of the sides and a Joker model constantly trying to trick it with as close to a hot dog, but not a hot dog, deformations as inhumanly possible right on the other side. Like maybe you're trying to protect a phone with a face unlock feature that has to recognize the registered face just regardless of how much it changes over the course of days, weeks, months, even years, but also prevent any non-registered faces from gaining access regardless of how close they might be to that registered face. Next, it was all about recommendation algorithms. <laughs> you got it, at massive scale. Constantly training and updating based on billions of signals that include time of day, location, behavioral patterns, endpoint, contextual markers, almost like an assistant that knows their boss's schedule, but also learns to read their body language, their habits, their tone, like recommending a set of apps to you in a widget because there's a high probability one of them is what you're gonna wanna use next, or a set of videos to you on your homepage, one of which it thinks you'll wanna watch next. And fun fact, Netflix once offered a million dollar prize for anyone who could make their recommendation algorithm just 10% better. And yes, currently, right now, the enormously feed-cloggingly trendy image generation engines like Dolly and text prompts, like. Chat GPT are just everywhere, but forgetting for a moment whether they're actually creating new and novel material, whether they're just Martha Stewart like decoupaging existing works into pseudo plagiarized derivative collages or copy paste, or whether they're really everything is a remixing like a Kurosawa in World War II dogfight style Star Wars, because it looks like, at least for right now, intellectual property rights law is saying just a big old non-human derived nope to all of this AI, like no shirt, no shoes, no soul, no legal service. And yeah, the AI might be able to identify a hot dog, but like Chili Palmer, what it's not doing is feeling anything about it one way or the other. You understand, it's not a delectable unami fast food treat for the machine to love or hate. It's just data in a training model, an object it's been learned to recognize. That's it, that's all. Especially because it's still such early days where outpainting can absolutely nail body and background extensions, do things that it would have taken me hours and days as an artist just a few years ago to do instantaneously, but also still can't help but give people way too many digits and limbs. And a large language model can generate 
10 terrific titles for a Mr. Beast video, but not know the difference in style between Public Enemy and Eminem, all the while presenting everything, everything with equal unabashed confidence, like a child or an own researcher, whatever. Which is why I want to go back to my intro and ask you, all of you, all you humans out loud, just how terrified or not we should be by all of this. Not because war between data and species 8472 is just inevitable, that we'll have an actual Butlerian Jihad and be forced to add thou shalt not make machines in the likeness of a human mind to our equivalent of the orange Catholic commandments, or that we'll achieve some kind of idyllic utopian state of cybernetic, perfectly balanced perfection between Infinity War Tony Stark and The Vision as all things should be, and we'll be all running around not as battle angels or ghosts in machines, but as techno-organic warlocks, Borlons maybe, ready and able to finally leave this nest for whatever comes cosmically next. Because I think it really does come back down to tools, always tools, going from crayon to airbrush to Photoshop to mid-journey, from pictographs to typewriters to word processors to chat GPT, from fire to nuclear power and nuclear bombs, from telegrams to telephones to the internet and social media. We, beautiful, fragile, arrogant, empathetic, aggressive, loving, hateful, generous humans have such a tendency to take everything that could fuse us more tightly together and use it to split us even more atomically apart. So for me, this conversation, this discussion, this argument is less about whether the tool is inherently net positive or negative, good or bad, violation or actualization, but about those of us holding the tool and how we'll use it to restore old photos of our loved ones or generate deepfake propaganda to write those 80% of tech support responses that are just way beyond pro forma or to spread super confident disinformation to the deeply partisan as an excuse to delete every human job imaginable or to free up humans for the jobs no one had the time or audacity to even think about before. And yes, confession time. I'm a huge optimist, but given the short and narrow arcs of recent history, I'm finding it hard to be optimistic about this one. Not so much glass half full losing to glass half empty, but so many seemingly preferring glass smashed on social with all the tasty beverage pouring out and spoiled for everyone so always. Which is why I'm asking you, all of you, all of you humans, what you think, even if personally, I'm going to hold to hope to the longer, broader arc of history that AI is just the next big tool for all of us. And one of the ways I do that, especially this time of year, one of the biggest and best ways is by giving to charity. And I know, I know it can be really, really hard to figure out which charities to give to, sometimes so hard that you feel almost paralyzed. You almost skip it completely. But that's just exactly where GiveWell.org comes in, today's sponsor. GiveWell invests over 40,000 hours a year into researching charitable organizations, distilling down the highest impact, most evidence-backed opportunities, and then making all that research available on their top picks, on their site, for all of us, for free. That's why over 100,000 donors have used GiveWell to donate over $1 billion saving over 150,000 lives and improving the lives of millions more. And because GiveWell wants as many donors as possible to make the best informed, highest impact donations possible, they do all this without taking a cut. Just check out the research and recommendations, allocate your US tax deductible donation to the charity or fund of your choosing. And I split mine personally between the top charities and the all funds because I find it challenging to just stay on top of everything. And if you're like me, maybe that'll appeal to you as well. Or weller still, if you've never donated to GiveWell's recommended charities before, you can have your donation matched up to $100 for as long as matching funds last. So to claim your match, go to givewell.org slash Renee and pick YouTube and Renee Ritchie from the dropdown at checkout, just to make sure that they know, that you know, that I know, that everybody knows that you heard about GiveWell from this YouTube channel, Renee Ritchie, and get your donation matched. Clicking on that button really helps out the channel and the world, and so does checking out this video, which goes deeper into how algorithms compare with things like reverse chronological timelines, 
So check out that video and I'll see you in the next one.